Welcome to this section. And the name of this section is SaaS Crash Course. So we are going to be looking at SaaS and how SaaS can help us when building front end applications. So what is the goal of this uh, section? What is the objective we want to achieve after completing this section? So after completing this section as a student, you should be able to gain the knowledge of SaaS that will allow us to build front-end applications. So it's part of the front-end stack SaaS. So what we want to do is to give an overview just to run down through SaaS and see how we make use of it when building uh, large-scale applications. So let's look at uh, SaaS workflow. Basically, this is how SaaS works in a large scale application. So you write your style in a SaaS file, and then you use a tool to convert your SaaS to CSS, and then you use your CSS in your HTML. So basically, SaaS is a preprocessor for CSS. SaaS is a complete uh, programming language like styling uh, tool. So SaaS is written in ruby so basically what we use style sas to do is to write our css code because our css code does not have all the power and capability to you know take care of complex situation we what we do is that we do we perform we write complex css code styling code in sas so sas allows us to write complex styling code because SAS has the full power of programming language, of Ruby programming language. SAS is written in Ruby. It's a Ruby programming language styling uh, framework, you see. So when we try to build complex application, then CSS is not always sufficient. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So SAS provides us with that power and that capability to build complex style code then what we do is that when we write our style in css we now use a preprocessor to convert that sas to css because our html does not work directly with our sas our html recognizes css so whatever style we've written in css in sas has to be converted to css and once it is converted into css then it can be used within our HTML file. So this is basically the SaaS workflow. From the SaaS, you process the SaaS, you get your CSS, then you use your CSS in your HTML. So in this particular section, these are the topics we are going to be covering. We are going to be looking at the basic SaaS uh, concepts, then we look at basic SaaS syntax, then we look at working with variable in SaaS, then we look at working with operators, then we we'll look at working with flow controls. Then we we'll look at working with functions. Then we we'll look at working with partials. Then the eight lectures will be working with Mazims, Mazin. Then we we'll look at working with extended directive. Then we we'll look at the various SaaS output style because we are converting our SaaS to CSS. The, the, the output style will determine if we want the, the how we want the CSS to look, how we want the CSS code that will be generated to look. That's basically what we mean by the output style. You can set the output style of your uh, SaaS to CSS conversion. Then at the end of the lecture, at the, the last lecture, we'll look at what body element modifier. Body element modifier is a methodology that we use to, is basically a naming methodology that we use to structure complex, the style for complex application. In one of my courses, I talked about component architecture. If you are working, if you want to properly work with component architecture, then styling your component using body element modifier is always one of the standard practice in the industry. So if you go to work in big industry, the knowledge of body element modifier will be an advantage for you. It will be, it will serve you handy. So body element modifier, modifier is a naming convention we use to work style our application our components so i will talk about this uh, body element modifier as well in the last uh, chapter 
so these are all the things we'll be covering in this particular section of SaaS crash course as you can see you can notice that all these things is just like looking at a programming language it's 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 more or less like we are working with a programming language that is the power and capability that SaaS brings to the table it is a full programming language and we use it to what construct our styling code then what we do is that after constructing our styling code using the full power of the Ruby programming language SaaS is a framework written in Ruby so we use the full power of Ruby programming language to create our style and essentially what it allows us to do is to use all the full programming construct like variable operators flow control functions and what have you to create our style then after creating our style we then convert our SAS from SAS to what uh, CSS that we now use in our HTML file that is basically a rundown of SAS and what we'll be covering in this particular uh, section so thank you very much for uh, taking this into introductory uh, lecture and see you properly in the in, in the subsequent uh, in the next lecture thank you very much welcome to this lecture the topic of this lecture is SAS basic concepts so in this particular lecture I just want to run through some of the basic concept that we will encounter with while working with SAS So basically in this particular lecture we will look at we will look at what is SAS then we then look at why do we need SAS why do we need SAS in our project in our front end development work then we'll go over to looking at how to structure a SAS project because basically your SAS project supports a large scale front end project so if you are building a large scale front end application then it's always good to use SAS because you are building a large complex application it is proper to what structure your uh, front end your SAS code properly so in this particular uh, outline I will show how to how you can structure your complex SAS application then finally we'll talk about how to compile your SAS to what CSS so before we go further I just want to show you what I have done so far like I've created this basically I've created a simple project this is a type a, a HTML type script project I, I use uh, Visual Studio to do this you can use any programming language but I like Visual Studio because it has so many projects you can create you know you can create so many projects you know if you just click on it can create so many projects so that's why I like using it for my example so like in this case I've, I've just prepared this simple project it's a type script HTML it's a HTML project so but I just want to show you how to how you can work with SaaS within a project because I feel it is it is kind of like it is better than it is better doing it this way than just talking theory 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 so this is a little uh, a, a, a simple HTML project I've created then I will use this to explain most of the concept in this particular uh, 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 section. So going further, what is SAS? Basically, SAS stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheet. As you can see, that is basically the, the meaning of SAS. It's, a, it's an acronym for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheet. And basically, uh, it is a CSS processor that allows us to write maintainable CSS code. So it is a pre, a pre processor for CSS. So basically what it does is that it is at a higher level. So SAS is at a higher level. So what we do is that we write our code at that higher level and then pre process it down to CSS. That's basically what we use SAS to do. It allows us to, like I said in the introduction of this section, SAS is a framework that is written in, C, in Ruby. So it brings to styling all the power programming power of Ruby so because if we are doing if we are working with complex front-end styling CSS does not does not really cut it so to be able to handle all those complex interaction we move up to the level of SAS which is a programming language this allows us to use programming construct to create our style 
So basically, SaaS becomes very useful when we are building large-scale front-end applications that have lots of CSS code. So that is basically where SaaS shines. If you are building a very large-scale application, then SaaS is, is a very important tool to add to your toolbox. For me personally, whether I just like using SaaS, you know, if you are building like Angular and React, Angular and React allows you to use SaaS directly. So I, I tend to use SaaS because most of my front end, I like using component architecture and body element modifier to work on my front end. So why do we need SaaS? That is a big question. Why do we need SaaS? You know, why do we need SaaS? Now, some of the reasons why SaaS is very important when building large scale applications include the following. So there is a, a reason why we use SaaS and basically those reasons include it supports inheritance. It supports inheritance in the sense that you can create a, a base a base style that other components could share. It, it allows you to create a base style and then other components, other styles could inherit. Like instead of if I have 10 particular components and each of them have their own unique style and styles that are common across these 10 components, I can move those styles that are common to all the 10 components to a base style and then inherit that common style in all the whole component so if you if you understand uh object oriented programming then you fully understand uh inheritance uh feature it allows us to use conditional statement like i said uh sas is a programming a framework that is built based on ruby so because it is a programming language it allows us to use what conditional statement you can do something like if if the button is click, if the color is, uh, is, is let's say red, change the color now to green. You know, some of these if, if statement, if, if the width is, if, if, the, if, if somebody has dropped a, 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 an item inside a container, then inside an area, then change the color. You know, it allows us to use conditional statement. It is more functional than normal CSS. It is more functional because it, it is using the power of Ruby programming language. So it, it allows us to write a uh, style to create styles that are programming oriented styles that are kind of like to create style using programming construct that's basically it it pro it provides us with a more efficient and clear way of writing styles. yes because we programming languages we, we programmers we like using programming in pretty much everything and say SAS is uh, written in Ruby programming language, then it gives us it gives us more flexibility and more uh, uh, efficient and clear way of doing things because we are using what all the programming construct of uh, Ruby. So basically, you know, there are different ways you, you, to structure a SAS project. Like I said, if we work with SAS, if we are working with SAS. I'm assuming that we are working on a large scale project. So there are several ways you can structure your SaaS pro your project. So in this case, I've just shared a little uh, a, a way you can do it. There are several ways. If you are if you are a beginner, you can you can you can start with this. Then as time goes on, you can develop your own style. So basically, we have the the we have the the, the base the base folder. I will show you it. I will show you the practical. Okay, let me just show you the practical aspect of it. This is basically the SaaS project. As you can see, we have this for we have the, the main folder which is called style sheet. Then then within the style sheet, we have three different folders called module, partial, and vendor. Then this is my then within the module, the module is, is used to house all the whole. So okay, okay, before I continue, this is the main CSS. So all the CSS here will be imported, all the all these CSS files here. Will be imported in the main CSS. The main CSS is the CSS that we convert to what it, the main SAS. This main SAS file is the one that we convert to uh, CSS. So, like, like I have, I already have some SAS file, some SAS code here. This is basically the 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 how this SAS style here have been converted to CSS. So, like I said, I use a particular tool called Cola. This is the tool I've used to do the com the conversion from. Let me see if I can get this tool.
where is color where, where are you i just want to show you yeah this is the tool this is basically the tool i use to convert this sas to what css i did the connection you can just it, it will show you how to link so basically i'm link i linked this is basically the tool so this tool is automatically working now anything i write in my sas file will be converted directly to my css file i will show you more instances of this as time goes on but this is basically the two files this is the sas file this is the css file so anything i write in this sas file which is here this is the sas file will be will be a, the css equivalent will be generated and inserted here automatically that is what that cola does for us so let me go back to the slide so basically this is the structure i've just shown you practically in my ide so the module the module folder contains all the sas code that do not compile to css so all the sas code all the, these are sas code they don't compile directly to css so we keep them here because what we do is that we like all the variables and all these things we import them in others in other sas file and then make use of them there so we keep all the files that house our variable and any miscellaneous items in the modules folder then the partials the partial folder this is where our main sas files are kept so all the files will be creating all the sas files will be creating will be housed within the partials so basically we tend to import files from module into partial into all these partial uh, files then then equally we have some we have this vendor folder this vendor folder this is where we keep all our third party css code and all we last say css and sas code because css you can import css into sas code as well so all the vendor css or sas code will be housed within this vendor that is third party like if you are working with bootstrap or jquery styling or any styling at all you can import them into this vendor folder so basically what happened is that all these particular you can import let's say if i have if i want to use like the font of this vendor in my partials then i can just import that font into my partial and make use of it directly you can work with css directly in your sas file so just bear that in mind but at the end of the day what happened is that all this work we've done here we, we import these guys and these guys into the partials and then at the end of the day we import all our partials into this main css into this main css file this is the file now that will convert to what our css file that we use in what our html so that's basically the structure of uh, our sas project so compiling sas to css html document like i said html documents don't work directly with sas so for us to be able to make good use of the code we've written in sas we have to convert it to what css i've showed you the the tool I, i'm currently using to convert my sas to css so but in addition to that color there are other tools as well you can use like this prepros code kit sas mister sas mister is an online tool i think i have it here this is sas mister this is basically sas mister so you write your code here it automatically generate the css equivalent here this is your sas code this is your css here another one you can use is this sas.js so sas.js allows you to write your code here and then if you click on convert there is a convert button below but you can see it from this particular screencast there's a convert button below if you click on that button it automatically generates the css file here so this is the sas file the sas code this is the css like i said i am using cola what cola allows me to do is to uh automatically uh i'm using this this is the tool that i showed you earlier on so you link you link your file and the css file you want to use as the your your uh, the you want all the, the css codes to be uh written on if you link the two that's your 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 sas file and your css file then cola will automatically uh once you write your css file your sas file your sas code and you save the sas code cola this cola tool will automatically pick it up from there where is that cola tool it's where is cola 
So I, I can't get it, but so but I, I think you, you saw it earlier on. So cola will automatically uh okay, it's here. Let me see. Okay, this is the cola. Okay, oh sorry, I've I've moved this a bit. Sorry. Uh don't want this thing. So this is basically your cola. You see if you you can if you save once you save your item if you save your item then cola will automatically convert your 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 css we automatically convert your css code into your 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 sas code into your css code that's what cola does for you this is cola that is the name there we have other tools as well so note that sas is written in ruby so because sas is written in ruby if you install Ruby on your machine, you can use Ruby command line to convert your SaaS to CSS. So that's another option you can use. But for me, generally, I tend to prefer using this for frameworks that don't use CSS as SaaS directly. Like I always say, Angular and React accept allows you to use your SaaS directly on the on your project. So there is no need of conversion. So to summarize what we've done so far, we've looked at uh, what SaaS is all about. Then we equally looked at uh, why we use SaaS. Like I said, if you are building large scale complex front end application, which is basically what you will be doing after taking this course, you should be able to go out and look for large scale work to do. So SaaS allows you to properly style large scale front end application. I equally looked at how to structure a SaaS project. I show you the real life uh, uh, project I've, I've kind of like built and how to structure it properly. So this is what SaaS allows you to do. This is the structure. So we looked at how to compile SaaS to CSS. Like I said, you can use. I'm using this tool, Cola, to convert. You you, you link you link the the SaaS file and the CSS file. Anything you write on the SaaS file. This cola will automatically generate the CSS equivalent and put it in your main CSS file you have linked. So this is the, the SAS file. This is the CSS file. Anything you write in your SAS file, cola will generate the CSS equivalent and put it inside your, your CSS file. Let me just show you a simple example of what cola is doing. You see, this is this is basically this is basically this now so let's say i'm adding a let's say i'm adding height if i add height let's give it a 400 uh 500 pics so if i save this document now if i click on save you see cola we automatically you see cola has automatically generated the height here so this is my sas code and this is my css code so anything you write here and you save cola this guy cola will automatically generate the css here and put it in this file here i linked this file and this file here as you can see this file here is this this one here is this so that's what this tool allows you to do and this is what i'll be using in most of the projects so that you know you take note of this so I think that largely brings us to the end of this uh, particular lecture. We've looked at all these guys. I think it's a very good introduction to what we will be doing going forward. So I thank you very much for uh, taking this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. Uh, the topic of this lecture is SaaS uh, basic SaaS center. So we'll be looking at We'll be looking at uh, the, the the basic syntax we we have in in in, in SAS. Basically, the 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 SAS syntax is the different types of file that you can use when writing a SAS uh, program, a SAS code. You know, there are different types of file uh, file you can use for your SAS, and I will show you that in in the in going forward. So. Basically, the key concept we'll be covering are what are SAS syntax. I will just explain what SAS syntax is all about, and then I will talk about the types of SAS syntax, and then I'll give you examples of SAS syntax. I think that's basically the way I've structured this particular lecture. So, what are SAS syntax? So, essentially, the SAS syntax represents the different 
file types that can be used within a SAS project. So there are different types of SAS file you can use within a SAS uh, project. So those different types of SAS is what we call SAS syntax. There are there are basically two, and depending on which one you are using, the way you structure your SAS code will be different. So that's why it is good to know about them. So we we'll look at the types of uh, SAS syntax. As I said, SAS supports two different syntaxes. So the first one is the CSS. SCSS syntax. So this syntax uses the file extension CSS. This is the easiest and the most popular. You see that they, 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 they look at it here. This is basically the look at it here. That is the one I've been using. You see the extension. The extension, or let's look at it. You see the extension. The last the, the extension here is uh S C S S. You can I can create another one and call it. Let me just try and show you the other type of SAS you can create as well. Let me uh add um let me just see if I can get that SAS. If we have SAS, do we have SAS? Okay, let me just see if I can I can use uh do something of like this. The other one has uh this syntax. Let me see if we can recognize it. Okay, this is the other one. These are these the other syntax, you know, with i dot s s a s s. So this and this. So they are they are different in all together. This is the most popular, and this is the one I've used. So let me just delete this so that we don't uh, okay let's leave it let's leave it and continue with the presentation so like this is the one we've been using the one that has this extension so this is the easiest one and this is the one we will use throughout this uh, this particular section then the second type is the indented syntax this is the scss syntax this is the indented syntax so this syntax uses first extension dot s a s s dot sas it uses indentation instead of curly bracket so i think that is the difference this guy this indented star uses indentation they just like python where you use indentation then this one is like javascript where you use curly bracket so look at it it uses indentation instead of curly braces and semicolon to to describe the format of a document so they they are they are they, they are they are basically the two types of syntaxes we have in in in, in SAS. So uh, the 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 two are compatible with each other. That is another thing you have to know. So you can work with the two. They are compatible with each other. That is to say, I can I can write my code here. I can write my code in this, in this one in this particular uh, SAS and then import it in my CSS S CSS. So I can I can I can write my code in SAS. In indented format and then import it in this particular scss file so they are compatible that's what they are trying to say what i'm trying to say they, they are compatible so i think that is all but uh, note that this one uses indentation it's very important to know it uses indentation like python so this this is the example of our sas syntax the two SAS syntax. This is the first one. You can see it uses what curly bracket. You see this curly bracket, and it uses what semicolon as well. Then this guy does not use uh, curly bracket. It doesn't use curly bracket. It uses indentation. You know, so you have to be very careful. You know, this can be quite confusing if you don't really know. If if you don't really know, if you don't really know how to go about it so that's why in the in the in in the last slide i made mention that this is the easiest and the most popular so this guy is the most easiest and the most popular and this is what we will use throughout the throughout our our project we are not going to be touching this so these are the basic two syntaxes we have in in, in, in sas so it's very good to know about it you know so to summarize, we've looked at what are SAS syntaxes. I talked about the two types of SAS syntaxes we have. The one is the SCSS syntax, and the other one is the indentation. In, in the indenting, is it uh, 
indented syntax so indented syntax so uh, the first one has a, an extension of scss while the last one has an extension of sas so and i showed you the example of uh, sas syntax just to know to 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 properly uh emphasize what i've mentioned the the first one with extension s css is the most popular and the easiest and the one we are going to use throughout this project or this section so uh, thank you very much for uh, taking this lecture we we'll see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture and the topic of this lecture is working with variables so i just want to show you how to work with variables in sas in 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 some of the previous uh, like in the in the section on javascript we talked about variables so uh, sas also has makes use of variables so in this particular lecture just want to show you how to use how to work with variables in in sas so the key concept we'll be covering in this particular lecture includes what are sas variables declaring sas variables assigning values to variables using the variables working with default variables working with global variables and then variable scope so these are the key concepts we'll be covering you can also look at this key concept at the as the lecture objective that is to say the objective of this particular lecture and the objective is for you to know how to do these things after this lecture so after taking this lecture you should know how to uh, you should know what sas variables are you should know how to declare variable you should know how to assign values to variables and so forth so let's dive in so what are sas variables like i said like it, like other programming languages sas makes use of variables and essentially variables can be thought of as what uh, as containers that we can use to store values in and then make use of this value in other part of the file so that's basically what sas variables are we use sas variable to store value and then we use those we use sas variable to store values and then we use the variable to assess those value in other part of our file so how do we declare sas variable so this this is basically how to declare a sas variable so we start with the sas um we start with a dollar sign followed by the name of the variable and then followed by this colon and then the value we want to assign to the variable and then our semicolon so this is basically the style the syntax as 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 if you want to of assigning declaring variable so just note that in this case i am declaring and assigning value to the variable but normally this is just how to declare variable let me just open the ide and show you so without this basically how to declare the variable let's say font let's say we want to do font size then this is basically how to declare this variable i can i can assign value to the variable by by uh referencing that guy and what assigning value to it let's say at five pixel this is how to assign value so this is basically how to uh, as it where uh, uh, it's it, it i'm having okay it seems it seems i cannot declare value I, it seems I, I can't declare a variable without assigning value to it so i think that that is the wrong center so i think uh this is correct so to declare variable this is basically the syntax for declaring variable you have to declare and assign value to the val variable you declare the variable and assign value to it at the very least you assign default value we look at default value later on but this is basically how to declare variable and this is basically how to assign values to variable so i think i should uh have combined this declaring and assigning variables since you can do you since you have to do them simultaneously that is to say uh, declaring variables and assigning values to the variable happens simultaneously so this is basically where i have declared the variable and i have assigned a value to the variables so that is basically it yeah, how do you make use of variables so once we've once we've declared our variable we can make use of it in other part of our application as shown here 
So let me just show you some practical aspect of it. So let's just say we have this uh, font size. Let me just show you how it works. So this is the font size. Let's say I have my P element and I want to assign this font size I've declared here to my P element. So basically what I need to do is just to do something of this nature, font uh, size. And I am going to use that particular font, this variable that I've declared here. So this is basically how to do it. So if I if I if I save this now, it should generate the CSS here. Let's see. Hope it works now. Yeah, you can see the CSS has been generated. So as I'm writing here, I'm generating the CSS here. Notice that the font size is 35. And what I did here was to what I did here was to assign 35 to a variable called font size and then use that variable, assign that variable, the value of that variable to my font size here. So as you can see, once I save this document, this is the CSS that has been generated. So it's, it's, very, it's very straightforward. That is essentially how to go about this thing. So that is how to use your variable. Let's, let's, move, let's move faster. Then working with default variable. So basically, you know, working with default variable, basically, you know, the, the, the idea of a default variable is that like in most of the cases, most of the libraries, most of the vendor, you know, we talked about how to structure our code and I talked about vendor library. Vendor library are just like libraries that have been developed by other developers that we can use. So they could be free open source libraries or they could be libraries you buy. So, but the idea is that these libraries have been written by other people. So, and we want to make use of that library. So because, they, because there has to be a need to, to kind of like allow me that is going to use that library to adjust the, 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 some of the parameters they have used in the library. Then, then to achieve that, the, the, the guys that own the library need to use default uh, variables in whatever thing they are doing. It is default because when I'm going to use the library, I might change the value to suit my need. So that's basically the, what default variable is all about. Default variables are variables that have been defined in such a way that the end user of that particular library can change their values. So that's what default variables, uh, uh, default variables are. Like in this case, I have a library called, uh, I have a, 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 a file called uh, underscore library CSS. And in that library, I've declared this default value. I've declared this value. So to make a variable default, you have to put this keyword, this, uh, um, uh, uh, is it uh, exclamation mark and then default. So this has, this indicates that this particular variable is default. So because it is default, I can change if I import this variable in this in, in another file. If I import this library in another file, I can now change the value of this variable and then use the use use uh, the value here. So I think that is basically what uh, what what that is basically what uh, default variables are. So you can read through this explanation. So different variables are variables that have been de de defined by third parties or in, a, in another file and assign a default value to. Then if we are going to use that variable, then it means that we are going to what? Assign our own value to that particular variable. So let me just show you a simple example. Let's say in this particular file, I have defined a default uh, color black. I've, I've defined a default color black and I want to import this file to my main CSS. So if I import this file to this, uh, if I import this file, if I import this file to this guy, I think what I have is something of this nature. I can import it directly from here. So this is basically the import. This is basically me importing this file here. Yeah. So let me save this. Hope this doesn't complain. So I have this here. I notice that inside this, 
inside this inside this i have a default color so if i want to use that default color here i can call that variable hope it works hope it works then if i save this what should i have do i have that working yeah as you can see if i come because this variable this particular variable black i defined it here and i imported this file here so as this import when i import this particular file when I import this particular file into this particular file, it imports all the variable, all the functions and everything into this particular file. So now I, I'm calling this black, uh, I'm calling, I call this black, this dollar sign black, this variable here. So when I save this, I see the black color here. So, but what if I don't want the color? What if I don't want this default color? What should I do? I can come over here and define a separate color for that uh, black and assign a different value to it, let's say red. So if I do this and save this now, what will happen? Yeah, this is changed to red. So that is basically how to work with default color. You can use the default color or you can assign your own color. You can reassign a value to that default color. And then that is basically how to use it. You know, this is our default color. So I can use the initially I use the, the color directly. If I do something that if I comment this out and save this, you will notice that in this case, I'm using what the default color. But if I if I uncomment this, I'll be using what the, the value I've just assigned, you know, yeah, this is the CSS that is generating. So that's how to work with default color. Let's, 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 let's power down. So working with global variable, it is very important to know the difference between global variable and local variable. It's called variable scope. So global variable are variable that we define outside a function or a maxim. And this global variable is accessible by every other function, every other, within every, all the whole, all the parts of the file, within any part of the file. So that is what global variable is. So this this is basically our our function, our 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 class, our our object. This is our our objects. You know, everything in programming is an object. So this is our object. So every every. A global variable is a variable we, de we define outside all these objects, outside functions, maxim, whatever. So a variable we define outside this object is called global variable. And why is it global variable? It is called global variable because it can be assessed within all the objects we've defined. You see, then this, we have a variable here. Any variable you define within inside an object is known as a local variable we have look okay it is known as local variable so we have global variable we have local variable global variable are defined outside objects local variables are defined within objects so if you define a variable globally every other object can assess you can assess that particular variable within other objects but if you define a variable locally you can only access that of that variable within that object like in this case i've defined a local color here i can only access this local color within this object within this p object i can't access the color here but i've defined this guy globally i can access this guy within this object and within this object so i think that is basically the explanation so if i if i copy this let's see if we can move this and do some little less uh, uh just to show you how it turns out, you know, how it's, I don't want to waste much time, but I think we are, we are on track. So if I just copy this and come over here, let's remove all these guys. And then paste this here. So 
like I've said, I've defined this. This is my global. Uh, this is my global object. This is my global object. This is my global object. Global variable, rather. And I have I've assigned uh, a color green to it. This is my local variable. I've assigned a color yellow to it. So if I try saving this, what do I have? Let's try and save this and see. If we save this, this is basically what we have. You see, the, 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 the color, the color for P, my P object, the color is yellow. And the color for my A object, this is my A object. A object, this is an object. So the color, the color parameter has what? The, the value of the global variable, which is green. So we have green here, we have yellow here. So let me try and let, let's try assessing this uh, local variable within this and see. So let's try assessing this within this and see whether it will work. So if I do something of this nature, I know it will complain. If I do something of this nature, as you can see, you can't even see it. It's not even accessible. You can't see it. So if I try doing something of this nature, I don't want to crash. If I try doing something of this nature, what will I have? I don't want to crash my color because that will, that will, that will, I don't want to crash color. Let me, let's not try this. I don't want to crash this uh, this particular color. I don't want to crash it. But normally it will, it will complain. Let's try it out. I hope it doesn't get crashed. Yeah, it will complain. You see, it's it's complaining. Because it can what let, let's let's read the error undefined variable you know undefined undefined variable local color because we've defined this local color within this contest so since we've defined it within this contest it is not going to be accessible outside this object so that is one thing you have to note so let's return this to our global variable and see hope this works properly yeah. It's working normal, you see. It's working normal. So that is basic. That is basically global variable and local variable and what have you. It's important to know about it. So let's move back to our presentation. Variable scope. So like I said, like I've just I've just mentioned, you know, SAS supports the concept of scope like every modern programming language variables are only available to the nesting level where they have been defined like i said if you we've just tested it if we define a color here if we define a color here and then let's say we have we have we have a let's test this example let's test this example what we have here is that we have a variable we've declared globally called main color and we've assigned a green to it then within this object, I've defined another another variable of the same name, named main color, and I've assigned look yellow to it. What I'm trying to explain is that for this particular p value, the 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 variable the one the the one it will use is this one I've defined here. It will not use this one. It will use the one I've defined here. For this one, for this particular object, this is the one it will use. It's almost like the last experiment we did. But let's just try this. I don't want the video to go too far, but let's just try this before coming over to summarize. So if I clear up these guys and I paste this, what do we have? We have almost the same results. So this, this variable has the same name as the one I've declared globally. But irrespective of the fact that they have the same name, the one I've declared locally is the one that will be used. So that's what I'm trying to say. So if I save this, I will have the same result as well. So let's just let's try and change this color to red so that we get a different value. If I save this, what do I have? I have red. So it will not use green irrespective of the fact that they have the same name as this one that this one has the same name as this particular one i've declared here irrespective because the one that is declared locally is the one that will be used not the one that will be declared globally that have been declared globally so that's basically about scope and all the rest it's very good to know about that yeah so i think let's move over to summarize so 
Uh, to summarize this particular lecture, we've looked at several concepts. We've looked at uh, what SARS are. We've looked at how to declare SARS variables. We've looked at how to assign values to SARS variables. We've looked at how to use SARS variable in, in other parts of the file. We've looked at how to work with default variables. We've equally looked at how to work with global variables. And finally, we touched on variable scope. I think that brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you for your time and see you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. The topic of this lecture is working with operators. So I just want to show you some of the uh, operators we use in our SAS project or SAS program. So like every other programming language, SAS also has this uh, idea of operators and you know all the arithmetic and whatever operators. So that's basically what we want to cover in this particular lecture. So let's just dive straight. So the key concept we'll be looking at are basically what are SAS operators. We want to know what SAS operators are and then the types of SAS, SAS operators. So that's basically the key concept or the learning objective. So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to know what SAS operators are. You should be you should be able to also know the types of SAS operators. So that's basically what you will gain or uh, you will learn after taking this lecture. So what are SAS operators? So basically SAS operators perform an operation on one or more variables and then return a result that is based on that operation. So that's basically it. It takes one or more variables or values or variable, perform operations on them, and then return a value that is based off of that particular operation. So it, it's normal opera, opera, operation, operator operation that we see in when we talked about JavaScript operators and all the rest. So it's, it's the same thing. So types of SaaS operators. So basically, SAS support various types of operators that can allow us perform operations within our SAS file. So these operators include like arithmetic operators. We have comparison operators and we have logical operators. So let's 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 move straight. We've seen all these in in our JavaScript uh, section. So arithmetic operators. So uh, basically, SAS supports the following standard arithmetic operators. So Arithmetic operators are arithm uh, are con arithmetic construct that allows us to perform all the basic al arithmetic oper operations. Like we have the uh, the plus operator, addition operator. We have the subtraction operator. We have the multiplication uh, operator. We have the division operator. We have the modulo operator. So if we let's just take this and play around with it, just to show you how it works. So if I go to this place and just copy this guy and come over to my IDE, let's clear off these guys. Let's just try and clear off these guys. Let's try and save so that this uh, is this clear. And if I paste this, I just want to show you all the basic arithmetic operators. this module is not working properly how do we do module? i will i will check that later but these are basically our source operators yeah as you can see as you can see this is my addition let's just split them so that you see them properly so this is basically ad my addition operators i take this height i take these two values and add them together in this case i'm i'm kind of like um i'm kind of like uh what am i doing here i'm subtracting 60 from 30 from 60. in this case i'm dividing 100 pips by 2. in this case i'm multiplying 45 pips by 3. in this case i'm dividing 22 by 6. i've tried to get the modulo of that guy does it work? It doesn't. Let me see because I've done division here. I just want to get modulo and see if, if that works. Oh, it's modulo, not an operator. This doesn't work. Let me try and see if I can wrap it up in the 
I just want to get the modulo. But if I can't get it, then we might just leave out the modulo for now. We we'll leave out the modulo for now. Maybe later on in the subsequent uh, lecture, we'll just show you how to do that. So if I run this code now, if I save this file, what do I have? Let's just save this file and see if it works properly. Yes, it works properly. But this sub this subtraction didn't work well. Let's 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 try and the subtraction didn't work well. Let me and the division as well did not work well. So let's remove this. It seems I need to put them in in. Uh, let's try and put this in the. Uh, in this way and see let's put this let's wrap them in this way and see let's save and see what happens yeah they work properly now you know you, you, you kind of like so basically what we did was 120 plus 40 160 60 minus 30 30 100 divided by 2 100 pips divided by 2 we have 50 45 pips times 3 we have 135 22 pips divided by 6 we have 3 point something 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 I needed to get the modulo of that particular value I needed to get the modulo maybe in the subsequent uh, lecture we show you how to do the modulo so I think that's basically our arithmetic operators uh, we've seen how that works I don't want to waste much time let's move over to comparison operator so basically what comparison operator allows us to do is to compare values and then make decision based on that comparison so that is basically it so we have our less than this is the less than operator greater than operator equal to operator not equal to operator less than or greater than operator greater than or equal to operator so basically like i said our comparison operators allows us to compare two values and based of based on that result the result of that comparison we can now perform additional action we can now perform additional action so that's the key stuff you need to know we use the comparison operators to compare two numbers and then based on the result and notice that the result of a comparison will be either true or false so it is either 10 is greater than 5 which is true or 10 is greater than 20 which is false so that's basically the kind of stuff we do with comparison operator so let's try and take this code and, and run this code and just see let's just play around with this code and see what we we'll have there so if i take this code and copy this code go to my ide let's clear these out let's clear these out you have all these in the presentation style so you can play around with them so if I now paste this guy, so what do I have? So I think for this to properly work, let me just see if I can create, let's say my, let's say my P tag, my P object, and let's just cut this guy. Let's cut this guy and paste this guy here. So let's create another one. Let's create our A tag. And then let's cut this guy and paste here. So I just want to show you a simple comparison operator. So this is a simple comparison operator. And what we are trying to do is that if, if P is less than 10, if this value, uh, what I did was I assigned a value to my pattern. So if P is less than 10, what will happen? If this if p is less than 10 then what will happen this code will be displayed if not this code will this one will be displayed so that's what we use if we use if statement and our comparison operator this is our comparison operator less than so let's say let's let's try and let's let's make this let's say 12 let's make this 12 just to make it more meaningful you know, so if I run this code now, what this will check is it will check if this pattern, if this value here, I assign 10 to this variable, and I'm using this variable here to make comparison with this value here. 
you see so if this if the value if this 10 is less than 12 then this one will show else this one will show so let's 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 run this and see if we save this what do we have it's it's there is a problem Houston there is a problem so I think we've got a problem here we've got a problem I'm trying to look at we we'll have this else I think I'm trying to see I can't see it's not seeing that else um i might not want to waste so much time you know in this particular okay it seems i've okay i know it seems that i've not i didn't add the uh, it seems i didn't add these uh add sign let's see if this works i pray and hope this works let's see i pray and hope this works because if not if i save this again what do i have yeah it works perfectly well now you see so because this 10 is less than 12 this code is the one that we display you see but let's say if we make this if we make this as 15 now let's change this to 15 and save in this case this one will be displayed as you can see here so 15 is not less than 12 so because 15 is not less than 12 this code here will run but if you change it back to 10 and save then this p will be displayed so that's basically how to use comparison and you know the, you know it's it's very it's it's basically a part of it you know how to use comparison and what have you so it's pretty much straightforward like we have so many of these comparison here and then we can use we can use those comparison and you know manipulate you know we can use all this comparison but i just showed you one you can try all the rest following this method that i've used just try them all these are self-explanatory if it is less than or equal to if it is greater than or equal to you know so let, let me just try that less than or equal to let's let's do less than or equal to so let's do 10 let's add 10 so what this is checking is if 10 is less than or equal to 10 so if this variable here the value of this variable is less than or equal to 10 what will happen so if i save this what will happen let's change this color to uh, to yellow so that we have something different and so that we have something different with, from this so if i save this what will happen you see it will, it will it will return p as well it will return this value why because 10 is less than or equal to 10 so that's basically the idea nothing really too complex here so we'll move over to the presentation style to look at our logical operator so basically our logical operator have you know it's more or less like um you know what do we use logical operators to do we use logical operators to compare two value as well so if two percent if two values you know uh le let me just explain them here so sas supports the following standard compa uh, comparison of uh, this is not comparison operator this should be logical operators let me make this correction here so that we don't confuse uh we don't create confusion you know so SAS supports the following standard logical operators. We have the AND, OR, and NOT. So basically, essentially what we do is that with AND is that if true, if two, if two, uh, if two values are truth, are truth. So basically the kind of stuff we do with this AND is that we compare, we, we use, we use the, this comparison operator to compare values. If that value if we compare two two different sets of value together and their result happens to be true and true then and will return true if x and y if x let's say x is the result of a comparison operator 
and y is the result of another comparison operator if the if the if the value if, if x is true and y is true then if you and them if you and them together it will it will be true so true if x and y are true then for if if any of this if any of this is false if either x or y is false then if you try to and them together if you and them together it will return to false then for all operator all takes the two takes two results of a comparison operator and try to see if the two are if either of them is true then this guy will be true if either if all of them are true then if x is true and y is true then x or y will be true if x is true and y is false then x or y will be true if x is false and y is true then x or y will be true but if x is false and y is false then x or y will be false so that's basically what we do with uh, all operator we use it a lot you, you know then the last one is the not operator basically the not operator what it does is that it takes a the result of an uh, of a comparison operator you know the result of a comparison operator will either be true or false comparison operator returns two values returns only and only two values true or false so all these things we've looked at here all these comparison operators will, re will return either true or false value it will return either true or false value i, I should have mentioned it here but it's, it is good to know so what it does is that it takes the result of a comparison operator and inverts that result so what it does is that if x if x is the, re the result of a comparison operator and x is true then what not will do is that it will invert it it will change it to false if it is false not we change it to what true that is the kind that is basically what we use not operator to to do so true if x is not true so that is basically it this is a simple example let's try and see if we can play around with this uh, a little bit and see and i think that should conclude the uh, i think that is the last thing i have here for this particular lecture so we'll just play around with this and see how it goes I don't want to waste much time but uh, it's good to know some of these things so if i remove this guy and uh, let me just save this so that this guy gets cleared yeah so if i paste this here so it's almost like what we did before i have to put at here <laughs> this uh this is basically it so let's um so basically let me just put p again and let's put a here and let me take let me just cut this guy let's cut this guy and paste this guy here let's cut this just want to explain and so basically what it does is that this this is a, a comparison operator operation this is another comparison operation so what it does is that it takes this com the result of this and what perform an and operation with the result of this so this and performed what an and operation with the result of this and this so if i've assigned uh, p p is 5 p is uh, this pattern is 10 and the margin is 12 so what i'm doing is that is 10 greater than 5 10 the result of 10 greater than 5 and the result of uh 12 greater than 6 uh are kind of like undead <laughs> we call it let's use it undead so we and the result of this comparison operation and this comparison operation and use the result to decide whether to display this or this i think that's the explanation let me explain it again we use the result of this is a this is a comparison operation this guy is a comparison operation this guy is a comparison operation so we and what we do is that we and the result of this comparison operation and the result of this comparison operation and then based on the result of the and operation we either display this or this that is the explanation so if i try to run this code if i save this file what do i have we have color green why why do we have color green we have color green because this padding is 10 and 10 is greater than 5 and what margin is 12 
12 is greater than 6 so this is true and this is true because this is true and this is true if i try to add the two true and true is true so but let's just let's change one of these two let's say let's change this to three or uh, to five and see if we try to save this you know then you see you see a will be displayed so this one will be outputted why because the result of this comparison is true and the result of this comparison operation is false true and false is false for and logical operation true and true is true true and false is false false and true is false as well so that is just a simple stuff that's basically how to work with this stuff so let me see how we are doing with time we are already 20 so i'm moving back to my slides to conclude this lecture so basically to summarize this lecture we've looked at uh what SARS operators are and then we've looked at the types of SARS operators and what we can use them for i think that's that's basically it and with this we've come to the conclusion of this lecture thank you for taking your time to uh be part of this lecture and see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture the topic of this lecture is working with flow controls. So in this particular lecture, I want to uh, talk about some of the flow controls we have in SAS or we use in SAS and what we can do with them and what benefits they bring to our work as front-end developers that want to make use of SAS. So the key concepts I'll be covering in this particular lecture include what are SAS flow controls, types of SAS flow controls, using SAS flow control so these are the key concepts I'll be covering and you can as well take this to mean the well the learning objective for this particular um, lecture yeah so these are the things you should be able to do after completing this lecture you should be able to know what SAS flow controls are you should be able to know the types of SAS flow controls you should be able to know how to make use of SAS flow control so these are the key concepts you should be able to start using once you complete this lecture. So what are SAS flow controls? So basically I have, um, let me get my laser. So what are SAS flow controls? So SAS flow controls are logical constructs that allows us to implement decision-making capabilities within our SAS function. So they are, they are logical constructs that let me correct this so they are logical constructs that allows us to implement decision making capabilities within our SAS functions or margins so when we work with SAS functions or margins these are these are kind of like methods that we we write in our SAS file and that we use in other parts of the file so like functions and method in normal programming language so we want to be able to implement decision making in our SAS uh, file or SAS project so like every programming language we, we, there is always the capability to do decision making to decide okay if if this variable is negative do this if this variable is greater than this do this so the, the logical construct we use to make those decisions are what we call flow controls in SAS. And there are basically a, a kind of, I've listed four types of uh, flow control, SAS flow controls here. So types of SAS flow control. You know, SAS supports four flow controls, which I've listed below. So these are the, the four types of flow control that SAS supports. We have the if construct, we have the each at each construct, we have the for uh, at for and then at while so let's look at them individually at if this controls whether a block is evaluated or not so we've we've, we've seen this uh, in our previous lecture so we use the if uh, flow control to determine if a particular block of code will be is executed or will be evaluated that's what we use at if to do then we have the at each so what we use at each to do is that this evaluates a block for each element in a list or each pair in a map. So we use this to kind of like to, to, to perform a task or to perform a task based on 
the content of a list or a a, a a map so what we try to do is that we have a list we have like a container containing items and then what we want to do is that we want to do something like this for each of the items in the container put uh, 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 right uh, or let's say uh, right uh, well or let's say get the name so that's the kind of thing we, we we use each to do we use each to evaluate a block of code a block for a block of code for each element in the list like I've given you an example if we have like a container containing 10 students or let's say, let me not use content so let's say we have a container containing 10 numbers I can do something that I can say for each of the numbers check if that number is positive or negative you see that's the kind of thing I will use each to do to evaluate uh, a block of element you know for each to evaluate a block to based on to ev execute a code based on each element in a particular container then at four uh, this this evaluate a block for a, a given number of times so what we use for and while to do we use for to evaluate a block a code a given number of times so let's say if, if I have um, if I want to clap ten times so I will just use for each for let's say for if uh, what we use for to do is like if let's say I have um I want to I want to let's say I want to go to the supermarket ten times in a week. It shouldn't be more than ten times. So I will say I will check for each for for, for let's say for for the, the number of times I need to go to the supermarket go to the supermarket something of that nature so you, you evaluate a, a block of code a given number of time you loop through you know while the, at four and at while they are pretty much the same similar we use them to evaluate to loop through or to run a piece of code a given number of time but this the while at while evaluate a block until the condition is met this just evaluate at for evaluate a block a given number of times so you 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 specify the given number of time you want that block to be evaluated that block of code to be evaluated at why we continue to evaluate the, the block continuously until the particular condition is met so you will specify with at while you specify the condition that has to be met and then you continue to run the code loop through the code until that condition is met if that condition is met then you stop looping through the code so let me summarize this properly i said at this at if is used to make or to evaluate whether a block of code can be evaluated at each is used to evaluate a block of code for each element in a list at four is used to evaluate a code a given number of time at while is used to evaluate a particular code until a particular condition is met so that is a kind of like the run through of this so i will show you the practical aspect so this is basically I will just run through this practical aspect but uh, we have the practical session as well so we'll be able to do the practice as well so this this is basically how to use at if so basically i have I've declared a variable and assign padding we've done this before so i have a, this variable padding i have this variable margin and then i have this color one and color two so i want to check if this padding is greater than 50 and margin is greater than six run this else if if this condition is not true then run the code block within the at else uh parenthesis at s block at else uh at else uh construct this, this basically if you so at if at else so you can use only at if you can use at if and at else else is what should be evaluated if the condition specified here is not met so if the condition in the if block is not if the condition in the if uh part is not met then the the alternative code that should be evaluated should be the one in the else so if this condition is met this one will be will be, will be evaluated else if this condition is not met else this one will be evaluated so that's basically how it works for at if let's look at at each so what what I'm what we do with at each is that like I say we want to look through we want to uh, perform a task you know based on based on uh, the a number of items inside a list so we, these are the list of books this is kind of like the list of book 
and this is the author of this book so what i want to do is that i want to look through this list of book and create what a particular class that holds that kind of a, a particular class that we assign a background image with with background image something of that nature so i think that is basically i want to create a class of background uh, of background image so what i do is that i have i want to i'll have like these three books here then i want to use these three books to create what a class with background image so what i do is that i look through i use at each to look through for every book in books so this is how to check for to use the at each uh, statement each book in books just that's just the construct what do you want to do for each book in book for each book in this list of books I want to create a class and this is the class I want to create that is basically how it works for each book inside this book list I want to create this class this this is a, a CSS class I want to create so if we go to the practical aspect I will explain more let's see so this is how to use for each like I said what we use for each to to kind of like look through a code to evaluate a code a given number of time like in this case i want to evaluate i want to create this class a given number of times so i've specified that it should start from one for for this variable start from one and loop through to four so i want to start from one and end in four so i want to i want to create like four i want to create i want to evaluate this code create this class because basically what we want, what we are doing is we are creating classes that's basically because it's css it's not as if we are writing a, 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 a to perform my no when we work with sas and css we are just trying to create classes and, and you know css chunk of code so what i'm what i'm using this guy to do is just to create this particular chunk of uh, this particular class class css class how many times four times so for me to be able to do that i will use at four i will use this four construct so that is basically it if i run this this is basically the result then at while, like I said, we 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 continue. We use at while to evalu evaluate a given piece of code until the condition is met. Now I have specified the condition here. This is where the, I have specified the initial condition. The height is four. Then I want to say this is where I specified the condition. That if once the height is less than seven, as far as the le the height is less than less or equal to seven, this code will continue to be evaluated. But once this condition is, is has been violated that is to say if the height becomes greater than eight greater than seven stop evaluating this code so what i do is that once i once i create this class i add what i do is that i update the value of this height so that is basically what i'm doing here i'm creating this the, the class i'm creating and while i after creating each of this class after running after evaluating this code I will update the height and the while loop will run again and the next time it runs it uses the updated height to evaluate this condition if the condition is still holding it will run again so that's that's basically how to look at this thing so let me see okay what i will do is just to 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 show you the practical part of this thing so that you know it becomes a little bit clearer so let's start with the let's start with um let's just start with the four is we've i think we've seen this before so we've seen this before we've seen this before so i think we've, we've seen this before so if I, it's a conditional statement we've seen this before in, in our previous lecture if this condition is true is is true then this code will run if it is not true then this will run so the color the color that we display will be red if this is true if this condition is true then this color will be displayed green if this condition is not true this color will be the one that will be displayed and this is what um but i think before i do this i need to put this in the i need to put this in the in the in this particular stuff if not this guy will start complaining Let's see. 
we've seen this before so if i if i run this code now i think pardon is not greater than let's say is it greater let's say pardon is 10 so this is the this is the one that we be evaluated but let's let's save it and let's run it and see you see you see this is the generated css class so as i am running this code my caller is all automatically generating this css this sas this css uh, uh code so if i evaluate sas after evaluating this sas this is the css that was outputted now why because padding is greater than five this is the, the we have assigned pad, a value to padding and the value i've assigned to padding is 10 so 10 is greater than 5 and 12 is greater than 6 so this will be evaluated as true let's say if i if i if i if i change this to like 3 now what will happen is 3 greater than 5 no and once 3 is not greater than 5 all this we evaluate to false and once all this evaluates to false then this is the block of code that will be outputted so if i save this now what will happen you see this is basically it because this condition is no longer true so that is basically what we have with this um if statement so let's look at the while loop let's look at this particular one at each let's look at let's get rid of this and save this i will just run this pretty fast because i don't want this video to go too fast so this is basically what i have here so what i want to do is that i want to i need to do some i need to do some i need to do some stuff like this let me see if so if i try to run this what will happen yeah it's working properly so what happens i have a list here i have a list of books and i have the the, the i have a list of books that i've assigned to a variable called books then i have a, a, a I've assigned I have a variable auto and auto the auto of the book of the books and the name of the auto of the books is John so what I want to use at each to do is that I want to say I want to create a, 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 a class for each of these books a class that will display the, the image the background image the image or the, the the cover image of all these books that's what I want to do I want to create a, 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 a class for each of these for each of these books a class that we 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 display the image of this book the cover image of this book so what i do is that i use i use this for each i use this at each to loop through to to kind of like evaluate each of these books and then for each of the books what do i want to create for each of the books for each of the books what do i want to do for each of the books what i want to do is that to create this class so if i save if i run this code this is basically what i have you see i have three books because i have three books i will have three classes so i have i have the first class the second class and the last class so ideally what i want to do is that i might want to i might want to just uh add uh something of this nature I might want to do something of this nature because and just include the book yeah something of this nature so that so that the this particular the what I want to do is that you see the 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 you, the location of this book is the same so but they shouldn't be the same i just want to include the book name in this address of the book or, or the, the the name of the or the name of the 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 image the book image for now as you can see they are the same but i want to change this thing so that it will also include the book so if i run this that's basically what i did here that's basically what i did here i i included the name of the book in this particular in the name of the image so if, if I save this guy now you see this this is basically a unique name so these names are now unique that's basically what I wanted to achieve so this is basically what you have you have like three I might even decide to create okay these are the the classes 
So for each of this class, it will it will be a, it will also include it will it, it will be a class with a background that holds the background image of kind of like the book something of this nature. But all you need to know is that this is basically how to use at at each. So without wasting much time, I think I'm spending so much time with the explanation. I don't want. Uh, so we have other ones as well. Let's look at four. I think I have the. Uh, okay, I have the four here. Let's just copy this. So this is four. Okay, let me just remove this because I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to discard it. So let's try this. So what am I doing here? I'm just I want to, I want to create like four classes. I'm just trying to create four classes, starting from one to four. So I'm just starting from one to four. I just want to create four classes. So basically, this is basically what we use for to do. You know, for a variable from one through to four, create this particular class. So if I run this code now, what do I have? I should have four classes. You see. Class one bar one bar two bar three bar four with different uh, height with different width. For this one, the width is six, the width is twelve, the width is eighteen, the width is twenty-four. This is where I'm, what I'm doing here. I'm multiplying six uh, pixels by this variable here. So this variable here, if it, starting from one, so the first the first loop through this will be the variable will be one. Then the second loop, the variable will be two. The third one, the variable will be three. The fourth one, the variable will be fourth. So when the variable is one, then this this particular guy will be one, and then this will be six times one. When it is two, this variable will be two. That means this bar will be will be followed by this hyphen and this. Notice this. This is what you call. This is basically strange interpolation this is strange interpolation it's very good to know about this strange interpolation that is to say if i want to take a variable and put it inside a particular place if i want to take a variable and put the value of that variable inside a particular place this is how we do it this is what we call strange interpolation strange interpolation so what I'm doing is that I'm taking a value, a, a variable, and I want to put the value of that variable inside a particular place, inside a particular location in my code. So like this case, I want to put the value of this of this variable inside this particular location or location. So if I put this value here, this is basically what I have here. You see, initially the value is one. When the variable is two, the value will be two. When the variable is three, the value will be three. So it's very good to know about this. It's called strange interpolation. Strange interpolation. So let me close this and take this out and just save it here for you so that you can look at it later. So I think that is all for this. That is all for this. Let's look at while. How are we doing with time? Oh, we've, we've really gone too far. So let me cut this. I think we've really gone too far, but I think that is that is basically. We will just try and complete this so that we know that we've covered. It's better we cover something and spend some time on it than just. So the thing we want to try now is the while loop at while, like I said. We use this construct at while to kind of like evaluate a particular code until a condition is met. So what I want to do is that I want to create a class of heights. I want to create a class of heights, and I want to what to do that. I'll specify my initial height as four. Then I will use the at while. This is my condition. This this particular code will continue to evaluate. All this code will continue to evaluate until this condition has been violated. As far as the height is less than or equal to seven, this code will continue to be evaluated. So, but once the height 
becomes greater than seven, then it will stop evaluate. It will stop looping through the looping through, or if it will stop evaluating this. Also, what do I do here? Basically, I use strange interpolation here to insert the value of the height into this particular strange here. That's into this particular strange, into this particular strange. The class name. This is the class name. So to complete the class name, I want the class name to also contain the height like the way we did here we want the bar the the bar the bar that is what we did here you see the the, the class this class bar i wanted it to also contain the the this particular number so the same is applicable here i want my class name to also contain the height number so what i'm doing here is that i'm assigning this class will contain a height property and how do I generate the height property? I take the height variable and multiply it by one pixel. What I'm doing is that I just want to include pixel in my height. Why? I just want to include this pixel in my height. I can't include the, this pixel here because if I include pixel here, it will, it will not be able to allow me to evaluate this condition. So in the height, I just use simple number. Then if I come here, I must include this pixel. And to be able to include this pixel, I'm multiplying one pixel by my height. So that is basically how it works. So what I do is that once it, it evaluates this, I'm adding three to my height. So I'm updating this height by adding three to it. So that is basically what I'm, I'm doing here. What I'm doing here. I'm adding three to the height and assigning that height to what? The, the update just i'm updating the height by three so that when this loop goes again it takes the updated uh, height and then checks if this condition is true so if i run this code what do i get i should have uh i should have you know i have the first height and the second class the first class and the second class you notice that it's the second it's just two because when 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 it's when the height is seven initially the height is four i added through to it it becomes seven it evaluated seven plus three ten but when it tries to check the condition again ten is not less than or equal to seven because ten is not less than equal to seven it stops evaluating so that's basically how to work with why you know you continue to evaluate the the the, the code inside the 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 while until this condition has been violated once this condition is violated then this will stop evaluating so that's basically it i think let's go back and conclude the lecture so to summarize we've looked at what sas flow controls are we looked at types of sas flow controls and we equally looked at how to make use of sas flow control and take i think with this we've come to the end of this lecture thank you for taking this lecture and see you in the next uh, lecture Welcome to this lecture. The topic of this lecture is working with SARS function. So the key concept we'll be looking at in this particular lecture includes what are SARS function. We want to look at what SARS functions are. We want to look at the types of SARS function. We want to see some examples of SARS function. And then we want to also talk about how to work with SARS function in your in your in your your SAS files or in your SAS projects. So definition, what are SAS functions? Basically, a SAS function, a SAS function is a collection of statements that performs a tax. So when you write a piece of code and you, you put that piece of code in a function and that piece of code performs a tax, that piece of code is known as function. So that is basically it. In, in other, in other uh, sections where we, we talked about JavaScript, we noticed that um, it, it, we've actually talked a lot about functions. Functions are a piece of code that performs a specific task. The so types of SAS function. There are essentially two types of SAS function. You know, we have the custom functions and the built-in functions. The, the custom functions are the, the functions you write yourself. So if you write a function, a piece of code that performs a task for you as a developer, that particular function is known as custom function because you are the one that you know that wrote the the the, the function and then sas also has a built-in function these are functions that comes with sas framework so 
So that essentially the two types of functions we have, the custom functions, the one you write, you create yourself. And the one that SAS came with that is the built-in functions, SAS built-in functions. So examples of SAS function, I think I've, I've this basically, this example here, the one on the right includes uh, some SAS built-in functions as shown below. These are some of the built-in functions in SAS. You have the lighting, to, we use it to lighten a color. We have darken, we use it to darken a color, uh, opacify. We make a to we use this to make a color more opaque. Then we have mix. This mixes two colors. So you know that's basically how to use. Uh, these are built in SAS function. Then what happens if you want to create your own function? So to create your own function, this is basically how to create your own function. It's just like creating functions in other programming languages. You know this is basically you you have to use the at function keyword. You have to use this keyword and then the name of the function you want to create. And then if, if it is a function that takes in parameters, then you include the parameters A and B. And then basically this, this is basically the structure of a function. It takes two parameter A, parameters A and B, and then returns the, the, the result of the addition. If you add this part, it returns the addition of these two parameters. And then this is basically how to use your function in your in other part of your code. Yeah, so you create the function this is basically how to use it so let's see we'll, we'll do the practical um so working with uh, functions so this is basically how to work with uh built-in functions you know you you i specify a color red here and i'm i'm using the lighting the lighting built built in function to lighten i'm lighting i want to lighten this red by 20 percent that is basically it another case here i have this color green what do i want to do i want to darken this green color by 20 percent this is basically it i specified i specified the variable here and then call the variable here which the the number the percentage i want to use so what i'm saying is that the 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 lighting function takes in two parameters one is the the, the color of you want to change and the percentage you want to change it by so it takes in two values the color and the percentage you want to change it by the same thing is applicable to lighting to darken darken takes two parameter two values the color you want to change and the percentage you want to darken it by so if i want to darken it by 20 percent in this case i'm darkening this green color by 20 percent so that's basically how to use the built-in function so I think let me just show you some of this practical. Let's just do some little practice, and because I think we have we have enough time, so we should be able to do some of those things. So let's let's start with this built-in function and and see. Let's start with our built-in functions. So I have this here. So to clear this up, let me just cut this and save it for you here, so that you play with it later just before before i continue the 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 ide you know like i said i basically use two type of environment development environment like desktop application that i use as a development environment visual studio code and what visual studio so these are the two two development environments i use this visual studio it's the most powerful envir development environment in the world and i will advise you if you are learning how to code just use these two these are Microsoft product. This Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. They are they are the some of the they are the best. It it's easy for you to learn things using this particular uh, uh, development environment. So let's start with this built-in function and let's start with this custom function. So I have this custom function Yeah, I've declared this custom function. It's complaining. I wonder why it's complaining.
how this works it's already complaining let me see I hope this works. Let me define a variable called results. I want to and I return result. I don't take this returns value. I'm not sure. I'm not sure this works this way, but Let me just try it out. I'm not sure it's it's it it will work, but if it doesn't work, then we we try another thing. Let me just try this and see. But if it doesn't work, we just try another stuff. There's no. Uh, okay, okay, it finished without a return. So I okay, okay, okay. I think I need to do something of this nature. Return. Let's see if this works. Yeah, yeah. I need to put this at the return, you know. So if I if I evaluate this function now, let's just try it and see. Yeah, it works, you know. So this is basically my custom function. I've defined this custom function. So what I'm doing is that I'm just uh taking this variable here, taking this here, and then multiplying let me see if i remove this if i remove this it complains so it's like we just need to put the dollar sign in everything we do so basically this is a custom function as you can see i've defined the function here and this is where i'm calling the function the function takes two two parameters a and b and here i'm adding a and b and i'm assigning the results to r now i'm return let's let's just do this properly result so I am adding A and B and I'm assigning the, 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 the results to a variable called result and I am returning the results. So that is basically this function. This is where I'm calling the function. So in this add in this function, I'm adding five pixels and what four pixel. So five, it will add five and four. So if I evaluate this, you see the font size is nine. Nine is five plus four. That is basically it. Is is pretty much straightforward. This is how you define your function. And this is how you call your function. So let's look at some. Let's look at some. Let me just cut this and put this here. How are we doing with time? Okay, let's look at some of these. Uh, let's look at some of these built-in functions and see if if they work as well. So I define the color red. I've defined the color red. I want to lighten the color by 20%. So if I run this code, what do I have? You see? This is the result. So it's it's kind of like it's this is the result. You know, it's lightened, it's it's light, it's it has lightened the red by 20%. The same thing is applicable to this green. see what do i want to do i want to darken i want to darken this green color by what 20 percent so if i run this code let's call these um let's call these built-in functions so let's just take this let's cut this and uh save this here so that we don't clutter So if I save this now, this darken will darken this green by what 20%. Like I said, the darken function accepts two par two parameters. One is the color you want to darken. The second one is the percentage by which you want to darken the color. So if I run this code, what do I have? I have I have this. You see, the green has been darkened by. Let's see, the green has been darkened by 20%. 
let's say if i want to that's basically how to use it it's not so you will use this a lot if you want to adjust the color you know like if you're working as a front-end developer you know your color can be shades of other colors shade of a color so you use this darken and lighten to kind of like adjust the color just to to maintain the same color but different uh, shades so that's basically what we use this for that's basically it built-in functions and uh, user defined function so let's conclude our functions we've seen all this so basically to summarize we've looked at what SAS functions are uh, and I said that SAS functions are statements that you use to perform a task and that we looked at the types of SAS functions where I say we have two types the custom function and user um, built-in function custom function uh, functions are the functions you write as a user built-in functions are functions that comes natively with SAS framework We've looked at examples of these functions and we've looked at how to work with these functions. So I think this brings us to the end of this uh, lecture. Thank you for taking the lecture and see you in the next lecture. So welcome to this lecture. The topic of this lecture is working with SAS partials. So we want to look at what SAS partials are and what we use them for and how we use them in our SAS project. So basically the key concepts we'll be covering in this particular lecture include what are SAS, function, SAS partials, working with SAS partials, importing SAS fas, uh, partials and files. So these are the, the stuff we'll be looking at. So what are SAS partials? Basically, we're working with SAS. We can create files that we can import in other files. So this type of files, which start with an underscore, is called partial. So what basically what we do is that when we work with... Uh, when we work within a SaaS project, you know, our project could be very large. So because our project could be very large, our project could have so many components. So what we try to do is that for each of the components, we create a partial SaaS file for each of the components. And then we import those components into other our main files. Or we import them into other, uh, other uh, SaaS files as well. So any SaaS file that we can import into another SAS file is usually a partial, you know, it's just a convention, you know. So, and basically our partials usually start with an underscore, you know, an underscore, we, we, we tell SAS that, okay, this is a partial, that, you know, it's, it's basically, it, it's just a convention. Using partials helps us to create modular CSS code that are easier to maintain. You know, you just want to split things and then uh, uh, compose compose your your SaaS file. So we've seen we've seen when we talked about the structure of our project, we saw something of that nature. So essentially, what the thing you need to know is that your SaaS file is just a, a file. I, I will show you some example. It's just a file that you create to split your, your project and then later on you can import those files into your main application and you know that's essentially how it works because you don't want to put everything inside the same code mm -hmm. oh, okay let me let's just conclude this slide and then I'll show you practically how these things work but the thing you need to know is that we use SAS partials to split our code into separate chunks in different files and later on we bring we, we bring all those we import all those files in the main file so and our partial starts with this underscore so working with SAS partial working with special is straightforward you know we create a file that starts with an underscore as shown below and they and then import the file in other files using import statement that's basically what we do you know we create a file that um, we create a file that starts with an import and then this and then import the file. So basically we create a file like this. This is our, our partial file. And then we import this file in other files. You know, if you are working with large project, you split things up. That's basically it. And if I'm working on large SaaS project, if I want to split my SaaS file project into chunk of component, then I will put them in a partial file. So a partial file is a file that starts with an underscore that can, I can import into other files. That's basically it. There's nothing too complicated here. So importing other files. Basically to import your SAS file, you just use import, the import keyword. 
to import the the file so let's i want to import this my patch my my color this is my partial into my main css file i will just use import we saw it in our in the previous lecture when we are talking about default variables so basically you declare a variable in a partial file and then you import it in another file that is basically uh it so this is how to import your partial file into the main file you know you just use the import statement and the name of the file so let me just show you the practical before summarizing as you can see this is my style sheet project that we, we started off earlier on so like i have this variable here this variable is a partial you see it's a partial it started with an underscore so this is i can i, I also have other other partials here i have this these are base partial these figure these are partial they allow me to split my code into separate chunks then later on i can import them into my main file this is my main css file this is the file that this is my main sas file this is the file that will be converted to css so i can import let's say this figure partial this is my figure partial you can see this is a figure partial as you can see it started with underscore so let's say if i have this figure and i want to import at least i have a variable here that i call figure one figure one let's just call it figure one and assign a value let's say figure one has a height of let's say let's just assign a height of 500 ticks to figure one so to import i want to let's i want to to, to import to make use of this figure actually basically what happened is that after creating all your partials, you have to import them into the main file. Because if you don't import them, this the, the main file is the is the file that gets converted to CSS. So all your partials have to be imported into the main file. That's basically how we do it. We split our code into partials and then we import all the partials into our main file. Like if, if I have other partial, let's say this is my figure partial, let's say I have another partial called component. Let's say I have another partial called, let me just create another partial called component. Or let's say picture, let's just say picture partial, or let's say, let's just say, let's just create a, a partial called, let's say drop down. Drop down is a partial. Let, uh, let's just say date picker. Let's just create date picker. We create a partial for date picker. You know, and then let's say if there is any, we've created a partial called date picker. Let me get rid of these guys. So generally, what we do is that all these all these partials, you can see the, the folder called partial. All these partials here. We have to be imported into my main file. This is my main CSS file. My main CSS file is the file that gets converted to CSS. My main SAS file, this is my main size file. My main SAS files get is the one that gets converted to CSS. You can see it here. This is my main SAS file. This is the one that gets converted to CSS. This is the CSS the CSS file that all the conversion is put into. So, because this is the only file that gets converted, every other things I've declared as partial must be imported in the main file before it will be able to be converted to CSS. So, just note everything I've declared in my partials must be convert must be imported into the main SAS file that gets converted to CSS. Just note that. So, to import all this file. You know visual studio is very easy it's very good this is one of the best visual studio one of the best development environment in the world so to to import this is my main file i want to import this figure and this date picker into my main file this is my main file i want to import this figure partial and date picker partial into my main file all i need to do is just drag it drag it from the folder into this place you see it has imported my figures then if i want to import the date picker I just drag it and what it will automatically import it with with even the location it will get the exact location you can see i've imported all these guys you know 
that's the way it it works so anything i've declared here like all this all this uh stuff and all this stuff we we automatically be converted to the css file so if let's say let me give you an example so let's say i have this figure here I have a figure class here. I've declared a figure class here, and the height of this is let's say the height of this is let's say 350 pixel. I just want to show you that if I save this, they all of them, everything that included in these files will be also compiled to CSS that is in my main. This is my main. This is my main CSS. I just want to show you that everything I have here will automatically appear here if I come if I if I if I if I compile my SAS if I compile this why because I've imported them into my main SAS file so if I include here let's say include a class called date picker here then I will the width of my date picker let's say is 800 picks so you, you will see that if I save this now, if I save this, Cola will automatically do the uh, do the compilation for me. So if I go back to my SAS file now, you see, you see, you see, they are all appearing. You see, they have been converted from all this. They have been compiled into my SAS file, my CSS file. So what are, so this is how it works. All your partials will be imported into the main file, into the main SAS file. It is the main SAS file that you convert to your CSS. So if you com if you convert your SAS to CSS, everything inside your partial classes will also appear in your CSS main CSS file. Now I've declared all this in my partials. I've imported the partial class partials into my main SAS file. When I compile this SAS file, I can see every content of those partials in the SAS file in the CSS file. So that is the way it works. You know, I think with that, I think the explanation is quite straightforward. So let's conclude. So to conclude, we looked at what SAS partials are, and I say that we use SAS partials to split our code so that they can be maintained. And then I said that we looked at working with SAS partials. I said, if you split all your code into partials, you, what you do is that after to properly make use of those files in those partials, you have to import them into a main file, main SAS, main SAS file. It is that particular main SAS file that will be converted to CSS. And I said that everything all the content of your partials will automatically appear in the main css file when you do the compilation so i think with that we've come to the end of this particular uh, lecture see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture the topic of this lecture is working with mixings so we want to see what mixings are and how to work with mixings in our SaaS project so the key concept we'll be covering in this lecture includes what are SAX mixings, creating SAX mixings, using SAX mixing, passing values to SAX mixing. So these are some of the key concepts we'll be covering and they are also the learning objective for this particular lecture. What are SAX mixings? Essentially SAX mixings are piece of reusable CSS SAS, uh, snippets that we can you know use in other parts of our project or other parts of our file you know in order to generate a consistent CSS code so basically SAX mixings are a chunk of code that we want to use repeatedly in other parts of our files or our project so those chunk of code we put them inside a function called mixing so every chunk of code that we want to use repeatedly, we put inside mixings. So how do we create mixing? So to create a mixing, we use the uh, at mixing directive. So this is the directive we use, you know, to create our mixing, you know, and give it a name as shown below. So this is basically the the how to create mixing. We use the at mixing, and then we 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 
give it a name in this case we've given it a name of height so this is the chunk of code you want to use repeatedly this height is the chunk of code we want to use repeatedly in other parts of our project note we use mixing mixing when we want to use a chunk of code repeatedly in other parts of our project or our file this is how to uh, create a mixing then this is how to use we talk about using a mixing to use a mixing once we've created our mixing to use a mixing we basically in, use the include directive you know to use our mixing in a particular location we use include directive and the name of the mixing for example this mixing we've created here i want to use that mixing here all i need to do is to use this include directive and the name of the mixing if the mixing is not in another file i have to import that file to the particular file i want to use it in so that's basically the things you need to understand so if i call this if i compile this sas this is basically the css output the hardware pass value to a mixing so to pass value to a mixing what you do is that when you are creating the mixing you have to uh, add a variable and then basically i will use this variable in my in the body of my mixing this is the body of the mixing everything within this curly bracket is the body of the mixing this is the mixing directive this is the mixing name this is the parameter I, i'm passing to the body of this mixing basically in this case i am assigning this the value of this i want to assign the value of this parameter to the the the, the property called color the property of this mixing called color so basically this is basically how it is done when you want to uh, uh, pass values to your mixing so when I, this is where I am using this mixing now, I've, the mixing I've declared here, this is where I am using it. You can see I am using my include directive, the name of the mixing and the value I want to pass in. In this case, I want to pass in the, the color red to this mixing. So this is basically the output of the CSS file. So if I compile this SAS file, this is the output of the CSS file. So let me just go, let, let's do some practical stuff so that you understand how these things work. Let's cut these and uh, I think I've, I've, I have some of these things here already. As you can see, I've declared the mixing here and these are the, 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 in the body of the mixing, I have all these properties and I want to use I want to include all this property in a in in a particular part of my file and this is where i want to include all those properties so this is the declaration of the mixing and i'm calling the mixing this is where i'm using the mixing like i said to use the mixing we start with this include directive at include directive and the name of the mixing now when i call the name of the mixing like this everything is all the content the body content of the mixing will be applied here you see if i call this mixing by its name and the at include directive all the content whatever you have inside the mason will be included here that's basically what we use masons for so like i said you can you should use mixing if you want to use a chunk of code repeatedly in other parts of your project or your file if you just want to use it once there's no point putting it in the mixing so if i compile this now what do i have if I compile this, you see, I have all this now. I have all this, which are exactly all the content I have in my mixing. This could also, maybe I could also have other property in this place, like background color. So it will not affect whatever I'm including from my mixing. If I compile this, it will still be, it will still be all this, all my content of my mixing plus any at the existing content already we have in, the, in that location, you see. So that's basically how to use mixing. So let's try and see how to use, uh, how to pass values to a mixing. So in this case, I have this mixing here and this my mixing has the name of color and this mixing accepts two two parameters that's a color parameter and the height parameter and in the body of my mixing what i'm doing is that i am assigning the value of this color to the color property and i'm assigning the value of this height uh, parameter to my height property 
so and this is where i am include I, i'm calling the maxing here the mixing here i'm calling the mixing here i'm assigning the color red and i'm assigning a height of 60 pixel so if i run this code what do i have if i run this code basically i have the output here this is the css output as you can see i have the color of red and the height of 60 pixel so this is basically how to declare a, a, a mixing that accepts parameters so anywhere you, the play, any place you want to use that mixing you have to now supply those parameters the real value for those parameters so that's basically how to uh accept values within a, a, a mixing and you know how to kind of like work with values and par, uh, parameters in the mixing how to pass value to a mixing so that is basically it and uh do note that in generally in 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 the structure in the overall structure of your SaaS project your mixing should be in this particular variable file so any piece of code that you want to use repeatedly in other parts of your files should be in the variables partial within what the modules folder so your mixing and all the constant and everything must be within this variable then anywhere you want to use the the, the content uh, the mixing you will not import this variable this i want to use the mixing in my figure in this particular figure file so all i need to do is to come here and import my variables just drag and drop my variables here and then i'll be able to assess anything i have inside that variable so that's basically how it works it's a good thing to know and it's also very good to know how to use it in the context of a large project we only use mixings for those chunk of code we want to use repeatedly i've said this several times if you only want to use it once there's no point putting it inside the mixing you want to put it inside a mixing because you want to use it severally another in other parts of your code so I think that is all. Let's go back to the slides and conclude the lecture. So to summarize, we've looked at what SaaS mixings are. We've looked at how to create SaaS mixings. We look at how to use SaaS mixings. We've worked, we have equally looked at we equally looked at how to uh, pass values to SaaS mixings. So with this, we've come to the conclusion of this lecture. Thank you, and see you in the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. The topic of this lecture is working with extend directive. So we want to see in this lecture, I just want to share with you how to work with SAS extend directives. It's a very important concept when you want to extend a style uh, object in your SAS file. So the key concept we'll be looking at is we look at the concept of style object. We look at style object overview. So I just want to recap on what we've been doing by what looking at the overview of style object you know we then we look at what are extended directives we look at what extended directives are then we look at how to make use of extended directives then we look at how to make use of multiple extended directives then we look at how to chain extended directives so these are the key things i just want to share in this particular uh, lecture so before we go further let's let us look at style object because I just want to formally define what we've been doing so far and just to give names to things because if we don't give them to things it might be a bit confusing in fact this particular slide is, is supposed to have been as supposed to have is supposed to have come in the beginning of the lectures but I just I just felt I should do this you know maybe if you see this now you'll be able to understand properly what we've been doing so far so I have something I've defined as my style object so your style object holds what CSS styles for one or more HTML elements. So I just want to properly define a style object. So a style object holds the CSS style for one or more HTML element. Another thing you have to know about style object is that a style object are made up of two parts, the selector and the declaration block. So this is a style object. The whole of this is your style object. We've, we've seen this severally this this is basically your 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 css uh code or block so i just want to call everything like everything here as a style object so your style object has the selector this this particular selector is used to reference the html element then you have your declaration block so this is your selector here and the whole of this thing inside this curly bracket the whole of the curly bracket and the content is known as what declaration block 
then the declaration block contains what your declaration so inside this declaration block you have your declarations these are your declarations and your declarations are separated by semicolon you see semicolon then each declaration like in this case we have two declaration property one value this uh, let me correct this uh, this should be value one yeah so as you can see this is the declaration block now the declaration block contains what your declaration inside your declaration block you have your declarations you can have one or more declarations inside your declaration blocks now i have said that declarations that are inside your declaration blocks are separated by a semicolon now each declaration is made up of a pair of property and the value you see property value property value and the property and value are separated by a colon you see this column that is what separates what a property and the value this this is the column now okay so basically what we've been trying to do with sas what do what we try to do with sas is just to generate this style object programmatically so just understand this so everything we'll be talking about sas sas this sas function sas margin sas whatever sas whatever all we've been trying to do is what to generate what the style objects programmatically you see we want to programmatically generate style object programmatically manipulate style objects so in going forward in this particular lecture i will be using all this name style object selectors declaration block declarations and the rest so if i talk about declaration just know that it is what the property and the value if i talk about declaration block it means everything within the everything within this uh, curly bracket so just understand this because i believe if we properly define concepts it becomes a lot easier to make use of so basically what do we want to achieve with extend directives so the, the extend directives what these are features of these are features of sas that allows us to make use of properties that is declarations from another style objects so it's an extend directive allows us to make use of properties or declarations from another style object so this can be used when working with style objects that have common set of base properties or declarations but each have their own extra properties so you have two let's say you have more than one uh style objects and these style objects have common declarations declarations that are similar and the style object equally have declarations that are what not similar so what we want to do is what to extract those common declarations those properties that are common to all the style objects we want to extract them away into a common style object and then we now use what the extend directive to what indicate that what it is what a it is a common object a common style object that is shared between what other style objects so let me repeat it again so we have what style objects that share common properties so what we want to do with extend directive is what we remove those common properties or common declaration and put them in another style property and then use extend directive to show that what those properties in the common uh, style object are shared among all the other style objects so that's basically what we want to use so we extract those common properties or declaration to a different style object and then use them in other places via what the extend directives so that's basically the proper explanation i will show you the the problem we want to solve with extend directives this is the problem you notice that we have this uh style object i call success now success is the selector let me use that as the name of the style object success and i have this style object that i call failure notice that success and failure share common declarations or properties like the border color is gray here the border color is gray here the color is black here the color is black here the background color color is different in each of these style object here the background color is green here the background color is red so because we have these common properties properties that are common to this object and this object it is not always good to duplicate things in programming so because there is duplication what we want to do is we want to remove extract this property these properties that are common and then put them in a in a, a separate style object and then use extend to what 
make use of them in make use of those properties those those properties we've put in a common object into this particular uh success and failure object we are making use of so like this this is the problem we have duplicated code here and here so we want to extract remove this duplicated code and put it in another object and then use extend to what make use of those object extend we now use extend to extend that common object on this and this so but just understand the problem the problem is that we have duplicated code duplicated properties here and here how do we put this property in a separate object and then how do we indicate that those properties in that separate object should be shared with this object and this object so to do that that's where we use extend now this is how to solve the problem so what we've now done is that we've removed what those uh, common properties and put them in, a, in an object called notification so now to share this object with this object and this object we use extend so we call extend on this notification and extend on this notification indicating that this object shares a common property with this and this object shares a common property with this object so if we if we run this code in, in our css to if we convert this to css this is what we have you see multiple style objects can have the same declaration so multiple style objects can have the same declaration especially if they share common code so because this success shares a common code shares this declaration declaration block with notification that's what we use extend to do we use extend here to indicate that this object shares some properties with this object we use extend here to to indicate that this failure of style object shares some properties shares all the properties of this so let me repeat it again extend shows that we extend dot notification shows that this failure object shares all the same property of notification object so if we run this code this is basically what we have all the shared properties will be put in a single declaration declaration block and then the names of all the the names of all the style object that share that same declaration block will be appended here separated by what a, a a comma that's how to do it if you just run this code here this is what we have but the important thing you have to note is that we have removed all this duplicated code and put them in another class object called notification and then use notification with our extend directive on this uh on this particular object that have this common that share this common notification this common this, that shares these uh common properties so i think the explanation is quite clear so this is how to use extended directive if i run this code on my on my ide what do i have let's just try and run this code as fast as possible if i run that particular code this is what i have If I run this code now, I'm already having some issues. This is not, this is not, this is extend. Now this is not extend, extend. I should be extending this. This is extend, not extend. This is extend. I don't know why that is, uh, yeah, this is extend. So if I run this code now, what do I have? If I run this code, this is basically what I have, you see? This is the way the, 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 the output of this. So all the, 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 the these properties that have been that are shared that are common will be put in what a declaration block that is that has what the name of the declaration block will include the name of the, the common style object, the success style object, and the failure style object. Their names will be separated by what comma, as you can see, comma. That's the way it works. But just the thing you need to understand is that properties that are common to style object can be put in a separate object. And then we use extend and the name of that common object to share those properties between other objects. So that is basically what you need to know.
we have other things to talk about how do we work with what multiple extended directives so like in this case now we have to we have to we have two objects we want to share their properties we, we have this notification we have this critical and what we are doing with extend notification is that we are saying that this critical this this uh, style object with the name failure critical failure shares all the properties of what notification here we are extending critical we are extending critical and this we have declared critical what we are doing with this extend critical is to inform our SAS that what all the properties of this critical is also shared by what critical failure so all the properties of notification is shared by what critical failure and all the properties of what critical failure is also shared by what uh, all the properties of critical is shared by what critical failure that's what we we, we 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 refer to as using multiple extended directive we are using multiple extended directive in a style object so this is basically what the output will look like notification and critical failure shares these properties Crit critical and critical failure then shares this property and we achieve this sharing by using extend extend if we call extend on any notification on any on, on any uh uh, style object it means that the the containing style object that is this critical failure now shares common property with what notification so if we run this code what do we have if i try to run that code what do we what do i have if i try to run that code this is basically what i have let's get rid of this if i run this code this is extend not extent if i run this code now what do i have this is basically what i will get you know this is basically what i will get not meaning that notification and critical failure shares these common properties critical and critical failure shares this common property because we you we called extend on them within the critical failure uh, object so that's basically how to use extend to indicate that what we are sharing common properties with other style object with other classes or other uh, style object so these are style object this is a style object this is a style object if we call if we extend if we extend a particular style object within a style object so here we are extending this critical we are extending notification within critical failure it means that critical failure shares all the properties of what notification here we are extending critical failure critical within critical failure which means that critical failure also shares all the properties of what critical and this is how the output of the file will look like css so i think that's basically it then we look at i think we are we are we have to be mindful of time we look at the last the last this is extend let me just correct this straight away this is extend not extend this is extend yeah these are the, that, these are these extend not extend i don't want um so let's look at um Let's look at the next item on the list: chaining as chaining extended chaining extend directive. So we can chain extend directive. It means that in this case, we, we extended notification within critical, and then we extended critical within critical failure. So we've chained we chain this on this, and then chain this on this. That is chaining. So we we extended this on inside this, and then we extended critical inside critical failure. This is basically how the how the outcome will look like so what it means is that critical shares all the properties of notification so there will be what a common block between what critical and notification which is this okay okay what 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 this what what this uh, channel does is that we extended notification on critical style object and then we then extended that critical style object inside what critical failure so what it means is that this critical failure shares common properties between what 
critical failure and notification and then it also shares properties between what all the whole properties of okay let me explain this again we extended notification inside critical and then we extended critical or extended critical inside critical failure what it means is that all the properties that are common to critical and critical and notification is also common to what critical failure and then all the properties that are also this critical failure also shares all the properties of what critical and also all the properties of notification but this shares all the properties of what notification this shares all the properties of this in addition to the properties of this that's what chaining is okay we extend the notification inside critical it means that critical shares all the properties of notification we extended what this critical that shares this common property inside this critical failure it means that critical failure shares all the properties of this critical and it also shares all the properties of what notification so you have a common block between notification critical and failure you have a common block between critical and failure and then you have a common a, a single uh, critical failure uh, basically block so this is basically what we have here we have a, a, a shared block between notification critical and failure and then we have another block between what critical and failure and then we'll just have a single block for what critical so this property is shared between notification critical and failure this property is shared between critical and critical failure then we just have a single property for what critical failure which is this so that's how to chain extended directives i know it might be a bit uh, complex but it's just very good to know about it and it's just very good to know about it and by the time you start practicing you should get uh you should be able to kind of like uh, get used to it let me just make these corrections then we just run this code and summarize Is sometimes it can be very difficult for me to get my my mouse to move I don't know so, but just know that this is extend not extent I'm, I'm finding it difficult getting my mouse to work properly So I just want to run that code, then we we'll conclude. I think it's it's a bit uh, I know it's a bit complex. It's a bit complex, but it's it's straightforward. So if we try and run this code, this is basically what the output will look like. So this is basically how to change directive. We extended notification inside critical, and then extended the critical inside critical failure. So that means critical failure shares what a common property between critical and notification and also shares a common property between critical failure and what a critical and then there is also the the property that is only unique to what critical failure that is basically it these properties or these declarations this declaration block is shared between critical and critical failure this declaration block is common to only critical failure then this declaration blocks is common between notification critical and critical failure i think that's basically to think about how to think about it let me go back to the slide and conclude i know this might be a bit uh, yeah but we just read through you understand it so let's summarize we looked at style object and i mentioned that style object basically is made up of what the selector and the declaration block and i said that everything we do we've been doing in sas is just to programmatically create our style object then i mentioned that i mentioned what extended directives are i said that basically we use extended direct because we don't want to duplicate duplicate code here and there up and down so what we want to do is that every code that is common is shared between style, different style objects can be put in a separate style object and then we use extend to what kind of like uh, show that relationship that it is basically a shared object so we looked at how to make use of extend directives 
we looked at how to make use of multiple extend directives and we looked at how to chain extended directives i think with this we've come to the conclusion of this lecture i'll see you in the next lecture so welcome to this lecture the topic of this lecture is sas output style so we just want to look at the various output styles that are available when working with sas so basically the output style is the style of the the format the style of the css how the css that is being generated by the SAR, by sas from sas should look like so for example this is basically the output style this is the the output style of this let me just uh change this to nested so this is the output style you see the format the way this thing looks like is the output style so let's go back to so the con the key concept the things we'll be looking at in this particular lecture include what is sas output style we look at the types of sas output style so basically what is sas output style so when we work with sas you know within our pro front end project we don't use sas directly in our html what we use in our html is the css that is generated from sas you know we, we, so what we do is that after working with our css as we are working with our C, our sas we, we are converting our sas to css that is what i've been doing all this while when i'm testing this so if i if i change if i work on this a bit and then and i click on save it automatically generates a css file that's what we've been doing so we write on sas and then generate the css it is this css that will be used in our html document not the sas so the so 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 basically you can control the format of the content of the css file by specifying what the property of the sas output style so you can use sas output style to control the format how this this style should look like you know we use that's basically what i mean by what using what the the sas output style so you, if you set the property of sas output style you can control how the css should look like then like i said sas is a is written in ruby programming language so if you have ruby on your machine you can use the ruby command line for compiling your size that is to say you can make use of ruby command line to convert your sas to css and when you make use of your ruby command line you can kind of like specify the output style by using this particular format this is the format sas watch this is your sas file this is the, the the css file output then the style this is how to use it style it should be compressed so this is how to use this thing if you are using ruby command line this is how to specify the style of the css output then types of css output so like we have uh, we have uh, basically four types of css output sas supports four css output style then when using ruby and rel command line to compile sas to css we can use the style flag like this is what we've seen here this is the style flag we can use this style flag we can use this style flag here to control this is the, the 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 style i've specified for this particular conversion which is compressed so what i'm saying here is that if you are using ruby command line you can actually make use of what the style flag to set the output style now tools that convert sas to css also provide a way to set the output style so i will come to that later on but the types of uh, output style we have include we have the nested we have the expanded we have the compact we have the compressed so these are the four output style what i will do now is that okay before summarizing what i will do now is to show you the tools that the tool i've been using for all the for all our work so far in sas is cola you see this is the tool i've been using cola so this is my css file my sas file and this is my css file so i write my sas in my sas file and then cola this cola will convert my what i'm doing into css and put the content in my main.css file that's what i've been doing all this while so i will show you this is basically it here you see this is basically what i'm doing if i write my if i write my sas code here then this color will convert it to what css here 
so like in this case this we have to this we are to, to set the output this is color this is the tool for converting sas to css that i've been using this is we have to add to change this the the op, we have, you can set the option for the output style as, as you can see i have set this to nested let's try all the output style here and see if i put if i change this to expanded what do i have just be watching this just be watching this css area if i change this to expanded and compile you see this expanded it will expand this particular stuff it will expand this if i change this to compact and click compile you see it, it, will, it has compacted everything what it does is that it compacts all the it compacts all the style objects into one single line it com this compacts all the style objects into one single line nested what does nested do nested just this is how nested does then this is expanded expanded we just expand everything this expanded then this is what compact it puts all the style objects into a single line you see it puts all the style objects into a single line so all your declaration block everything will be into a single line this is what this is what compile then if i change this to compress what happened compress puts everything compress puts everything in a single line so that is basically how to do how how to alter the 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 the, the output style so I've, I've i've changed the output style to compress as you can see everything is a, is in a single line you see you see all the whole how everything have been put in a single line so this is basically how to that is basically all about the output style of css file you know it's it's kind of like you can set it here if you are using a tool yeah you can set it here if you are using something like angular angular also provides a way sorry for the noise angular provides you with a way to kind of like angular provides you with a way to if you're working with angular and react you also have a way to what set the output style so but this i'm using this tool cola so like frameworks that don't provide you as the, the, that don't allow you to work directly with sas then you have to convert your sas to css this is the tool it's a very popular tool this is basically what i'm using and if i'm using this tool like an adjust the output of my css file you know here so you see i've just changed this to compact to expanded so uh, uh to expanded it's expanded now this is the expanded version you can see this clearly so, so i think that is all about the output sas output so we have four of them nested expanded compact and compressed so to summarize we've looked at the what sas output styles are it's just the format the way your css should look like and then we've looked at the types of sas output style where we talked about nested compact comp expanded and compressed so with this we've come to the end of this lecture see you in the next lecture welcome to this lecture the topic of this lecture is a block element modifier methodology i just want to share with you what block element modifier is all about and why i have decided to include it in as as a lecture in this particular section so basically the key concepts we'll be covering in this lecture includes what block element modifier what is block element modifier why do we need bem bem stands for block element modifier so the beam bem convention the bem convention working with bem so these are the key concepts we'll be looking at so what is a uh, block element modifier basically bem stands for block element modifier you know it's just the first the acronym representing the first letters of block element and modifier and it is basically a naming convention it is a methodology that we use in developing css project that makes the code maintainable and easy to use so it's a naming convention it's a method we use when we are working with css project files especially in a large scale complex front-end application you have to use a a a a a a, a, a a standard naming convention so that why do we use a standard naming convention if you come to a large project you might not be the only one working on the project a project might have like 
10 or even 100 front-end developers working on the same project so if the pro if the developers are using different style and different names on their css file the whole thing will become inconsistent so because of the problem of having inconsistencies in the naming and how to structure code the, the you know the developers decided to some i think somebody kind of like came up with this idea of block element modifier it provides you with a standard way of working with css file css file that's basically what block element modifier allows you to do and the benefit is that if we are now working in a large project and we are using the same language the same method the same naming convention then everybody is in sync everybody is working with the same template so because everybody is working with the same template it's very easy for me to understand what the other developer is doing and the other developer to equally understand what i'm doing because we are using the same naming convention the same methodology so that's what we want we that's basically why we have this naming convention or this methodology to allow everybody work to the same standard then the key principle you have to know about BEM is that in BEM we use only class selector in our lecture in our series on, on in our section on CSS we talked about different types of selector we talked about attribute selector ID selector type selector uh, and what have you when you are working with block element modifier you are going to use only the class selector in your css file so just take note of that then why do we need bem i've explained to you before that the main reason why we use we need bem is that if we are working in a large project you want everybody to use the same standard and bem provide that common standard that everybody can use all the all the teams all the team members can use when working on a front end project so when working on a large scale front end project css code can become easily complex and difficult to manage so bem solved this problem by allowing us to work, reuse layout remove layout between within css files use layout in another project create a predictable css code so these are some of the benefits that a bem brings to the table but the most important benefit is the fact that with BEM, everybody working within a team is following the same standard and the same lang language and the same methodology. So if I'm working, another developer will understand what I'm doing. I myself, I will understand what the other developer are doing because we are using the same convention. We are using the same name. So let's look at BEM convention. The BEM, the main parts of BEM component include the following. So the main component of the main part of the BEM include the block. This is the parent element of the component. Then we have the element. The element could be one or more children element of the component. It could be a child element or descendant element, but everything is an everything within the block is what the element. Then we have modifiers. The modifiers are generally used to what change to 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 kind of like. A, to define the look state or behavior of a block or an element so the key component of the BEM conversion is the block the element and the modifier and then these three items forms the BEM syntax shown below so you specify the block you specify the element followed by the modifier sometimes you can have only the block sometimes you can have the block and the element only sometimes you can have the block and the modifier sometimes you can have the element you can have the every element must be must have a block that's one thing you should know you can't have an element without a block because your element must be within your block this can be one or more children element of the block component this should be the block component this block this is the parent element of the component this is the children of the component then this is the modifier you cannot have an element without a block so you must have a block followed by the name and the modifier or the block and the element only or the block and modifier or block element and modifier but this is the general syntax so like this is my this is basically i just working with bem this is the topic of this slide so i just want to show you how to work with bem like in this case this is my parent div my parent uh, element so this my parent element will be what the block these are my children elements this is the parent uh this is the parent uh, html element these are the children html element so this is my block 
these are my elements so if i want to write a css file to use the look at how this is the, the block this is the name of the block you can see that all these uh, elements have the the block and the element name the block name the element name the block name the element name i don't have modifier here but you can also see how to include modifier like here so let me just update that guy just to include the modifier so that you see how these things work i just want to let me first of all correct this and then let's say in the last one let's let's just put just this is basically i just want to include uh this is basically how to include your maybe i'll have to let me just expand this for the sake of this so that we have everything active so active now is my modifier you see how i've included active here so that's basically essentially how to do this thing if i want to put so this guy will now have um uh, we now have within this i could have another i could have another something of this nature with my modifier called active i think this is basically how this should work so we can have this is basically it so we can have submit then we can now have submit and active so i think if this is basically how to go about this so you can see i've added active here so this is basically the, the 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 block this is the block name these are the element name the name of the element the name of the element is usually started by what the block name followed by this double underscore and the element name so in this case i've shown you how to include a modifier the modifier the modifier is usually followed by what double slash and the modifier name and this is basically how this should appear in your css file so every so the, the way we look at it i talked about component architecture the whole of this now could be a component the whole of this could be a html file a html code snippet especially if you are working with things like uh, angular or react this should be your html component then every component must be inside a separate html file and every separate html file must have a separate style sheet file so that's the way we look at it so if i if i put this as a component in a, in a html file a dedicated html file then the the corresponding uh, sas file will contain the, the 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 html file we have a corresponding sas file it could be a sas or css but this is we prefer to use i prefer in this topic we are talking about sas so it will be a sas file so this is basically how to change your sas file this is basically how to change your sas file to match your html component and notice that we've used only classes like i said we use only classes so that is basically it so let me just see if we have any other thing so if you if you run this code now if you compile this code this is basically the css you will have so let's just try it out i think it's better we look at it practically and see how that compiles so let's just remove this and try to i just want to show you how these things work this thing will be inside this thing ideally will be inside the, um, a css file then notice that i might not be able to i might not be able to i might not be able to let me just see i need to let's let's just include a height let's just include height yeah and let's call it 20 pigs if i try to compile and empty stuff it might not go let's see color and let's say aqua let's do do i need to put that stuff i'm not really too sure but let's just do like uh, let's put color again and let's put uh blue 
I don't think I but let's just try if there's any error we'll see then submit let's put a uh, color again then for the active let's put color and a different color so if we have something of this nature and we try to compile this how does it turn out to be let's just try and compile it and see what the output will be like yeah as you see this is basically what the output will be like you see this is the output css file this is the output css file we have the message we have the message title we have the message content we have the message submit button and we have the message submit button active so for the submit button without the active flag we have this color but for the active flag we have different color this is basically how the the the, the css file that will be generated but the the important thing you have to bear in mind is that this particular file Usually, if you work with, if I if I'm working with BEM methodology, every HTML file must have must have a dedicated SAS file. That's the way I, I like doing it. Every HTML component, every component I've defined in the HTML file must have a dedicated SAS file. Then at the end of the day, what I'll now do is that I will compile, I will bring all the whole SAS file into a main file, and then convert that main file to my CSS main file. That I will now use in my HTML. I think that's basically it. You've seen all these and how it's it's pretty much straightforward. I'm using this in most of the work we'll be doing. So if you see something of this nature, just know what I have done. So let me move over and conclude this lecture. So we've seen the practic the practicality of all this, and basically that is basically. So let me just I know it. Let me just make mention of something. So like in this case, what, what we normally do is that our, we, we either assign this class active or class submitted based on a condition. Maybe if, if it was submitted, if it was submitted successfully, you might just put use conditional statement to attach this class to your HTML, HTML element based on a particular con that's the way to use this thing but i know if we go to the practical sessions you, be, you understand these things properly if you start building projects so i think that is all about working with bem so this is the output style we've seen the output style so let's just conclude so we've, to summarize we looked at what a block element modifier is all about you know this a naming convention that allows us to work properly with css project or SAS project, then we look at why do we need BEM. BEM provide provides a common standard, a common naming convention that everybody can use in a project. So because it, it's a common foundation, everybody understands the same language. So everybody is working using the same template provided by BEM. So we, we saw the BEM convention and we, we saw how to work with BEM. So I think that brings us to the, uh, to the conclusion of this lecture. And uh, I think. Uh, that is all for now. Thank you very much and uh, see you next. Yeah, so I think this largely brings us to the end of this particular section, this particular crash course on SaaS. So I just want to use this opportunity to summarize what we've done so far, to look at what we've done so far. And essentially, we started off with uh, looking at SaaS basic concepts and we move over to what basic SaaS syntax. And then we looked at working with variables followed by working with operators. After this, we moved over to working with flow controls, where I, I mentioned that flow controls are kind of like programming construct that we use to make decision in, in, in our SaaS, file, SaaS program. Then we looked at working with SaaS functions. Then we talked about working with partials. Then we talked about working with uh, mixings. This mixing is not uh, maxing. Let me just make the correction straight away. This working with mixings, not uh, maxing. Working with mixings. Then we looked at working with extended directives. Where I mentioned that extended directives essentially allows us to extract uh, style object properties or declarations that are common between style object and then put them in a common style object and then use extends to what share that particular content of the style object. 
So we looked at SaaS output style. Where I mentioned that we have basically four types of SaaS output style. So output style are the format of the CSS uh, chunk that will be generated from your SaaS file. So and I mentioned that we have about four types of SaaS output style. And I said that the first one is the nested output style, followed by we have the compressed output style and expanded output style and what uh, compact output style. Then we finally looked at a block element modifier where i mentioned that block element modifier is a methodology that we use when we work on large scale styling project if you, if you are going to go to a large a big project to work on you need to have the knowledge of bem because that alone could stand you out you know when you go and work in this big project so as i said that block element modifier is basically a way for us to structure our code it provides us with a common language a common way of thinking a common style of working that everybody within a team can follow to achieve a shared understanding of the, the styling or the, the, the work we are doing. And I equally showed you a practical example of how to use your BEM convention in a, in, in, in a file. So essentially that, that brings us to the end of this uh, section. If you have any question, you can always reach across to me and ask a question. But with that, I think I will say Thank you for being part of this section. See you in the next section.